Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. Uh, so in today's stream, I'm going to apply some color to this uh, Hobgoblin fan art that I've been working on. This is all done entirely in the Procreate app. And uh, you guys are welcome to ask any questions and uh, let me know uh, what you want to learn specifically. And I'll try to help out as we go. So uh, I'll jump on in and once I start seeing some people here, then we'll, uh, we'll get into it. So, I've got a lot of this already separated out just because it's kind of, uh, you know, self-explanatory. You flat in some basic colors uh, to get yourself started. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Noah. Is there two Kyles? Oh, that's Kyle again. Hello. And Mo D 50 uh, Just doing some coloring, uh, applying some color to this uh, Hop Goblin fan art. So, uh, so yeah, so what I basically do is I'll, I'll break these down into layers. I'll start with the orange on his uh, cowl and cape and that. And I do a two-finger swipe over uh, to the uh, layer. Let me make sure my layers are coming up there, yeah. Uh, two-finger swipe over locks the pixels on there. And it gives you that little checkerboard pattern. So what that does, in a nutshell, is it makes it where you can't go outside of the confinements of that layer. So if I take a shadow brush or what I call a shadow brush, I usually have this preset to multiply uh, for the blending mode, which is under rendering. See that? Burnt edges and blend mode, blend mode pre uh, predominantly, uh, multiply. So what that does, every time I apply a color, even if it's the same color, it darkens it each time. So that can be highly effective, and I set one of those to uh, multiply, one to uh, highlights, and that way I don't have to keep switching the blending modes to the brushes. Hey Lance, good to have you here. Good evening to you as well. And uh, yeah, appreciate the nice comments, uh, Modi50. Very, very cool of you to say. And yeah, so so I'm going to start coloring here, but you guys let me know. Uh, I'm just going to take my typical process. So one of the things I do, well, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> what I was going to say there uh, is I'll just start brushing in a global light source at first. I almost don't like how that's saturating the orange, but remember, you can always control saturation at the end anyways. In fact, I usually have to, but you do that by going into here, hue saturation, and you can keep bumping that down. But I can do that more at the end. So right now, I'll think about it a little bit more about the value, or at least the, uh, the darkness of the tone that I'm looking for. But yeah, what I do first is generally get kind of a, a global illumination or shadowing going just kind of shadow from the bottom and to the side of each area of the character and I feel like this is a good way to start because what happens is it's like the most uh, bang for the buck you know you, you throw that in almost immediately that one area of the painting or sorry comic art <laughs> starts to look more dimensional and then as you work up into this uh, you can work off of that basically so getting some immediate depth and dimension in there and then as you add to it it just kind of keeps building up and going from there so something like that just get a little bit of that shadowing going you can actually do pretty good with uh, rescaling the airbrush down or I call this an airbrush but you see it's a soft brush and uh, you can really take that pretty far I've, I've seen people paint with just a soft airbrush and make something that looks like it's got hard edge shadows and everything. It's just a matter of patience and scaling the brush up and down. Yeah, happy to, happy to do so, Matt. Appreciate that uh, very much. So, um, how you doing, Taroya Hollis? Good to see you. And uh, so, yeah, again, let me know if you guys got any specific questions, and I will just keep progressing through this. But basically... Uh, I'll start with that soft brush effect. I guess my shadow is more down here at the base of the foot at this point. And then what I'll do is take the selection tool and just grab uh, certain areas. And I might as well stay with the shadows here. Now keep in mind, you can throw these on different layers if you need to. It does give you uh, more room for edit. I think that what happens is the more you do this, the more you find yourself okay with just building up on one layer. And you don't worry too much about it. But in the beginning, you might want to use um, additional layers. I got a little missing piece here. So I'm going to unlock transparent pixels here. 
and I could fix this one of two ways. Hopefully you can see that. I can either blend this over, so I use a smudge brush and just blend that over, or I could grab the neighboring color by holding my finger on the screen, selecting that color and painting it back. Um, but yeah, not a, not a big deal, and then just remember to lock this. But again, if I want to build up on this, I can just add a layer over top of the uh, solid layer, tap that, and go to Clipping Mask. And what it does is it takes that layer beneath as a reference. So let me, uh, I've got my color saved right there. Let me pick a, a color you can see independently of this, like a blue. And if I just brush onto that layer, pick a solid brush, it's going to stay in the confinements of that other layer. It's clipping off of that layer below it. So really helpful feature to build up. And then the reason I'm telling you this is because that shadowing I just added, I could have very easily just added that with another clipping mask or just a floating layer. But uh, but anyways, just uh, just another way to get it done. Delete that, go back to here, go back to my previous color, which was here, and make sure I'm back on my shadow brush. Again, it's already got the blending mode set to it to multiply. Okay, uh, Mo, Mo D, can you ca stop uh, commenting over and over? It's kind of block. It's making it harder because then it's going to block other people from me seeing. Anyways, you're asking how long it took me to get to the level mat. Just I've been drawing for a long time. Um, but I, you know, that's going to vary depending on where you're at, how how hard you work at it. Uh, you know, I, I draw a lot, way too much probably. Or I don't know if there is a too much. You just got to draw immensely, and uh, some people can draw longer periods of time and not get frustrated. Uh, I could, I'm probably good for about 10, 12, 14 hours on my best days. And the more you draw, the quicker you're going to get there. And the more you're uh, open-minded about uh, learning you know like a, like learning new things like um, I'm a big fan of what uh, Albert Einstein said it was something like uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result and I feel like that's like very important to me to remember because uh, I will do the same thing over and over too many times and then I something clicks and I'm like wait a second I, I gotta change this up uh, so I think that's a big part of getting better you just have to constantly change things up and practice new techniques and study from different people that inspire you and uh, if you got an open mind if you keep an open mind it'll happen I don't want to say it'll happen sooner than you think because it's a very slow process but you will leap and, and improve here and there. You just got to keep sticking with it. But yeah, it's not easy for everybody because a lot of people want to see so much immediate gratification and, and get better like ASAP. You know, they think that they're always looking at the clock in that regard. I mean, you look at the clock to make sure you're being productive, but you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't worry too much about uh, seeing constant improvement in your work. It happens just because you you continue to do it. It's like it's go for the um, the uh, the journey, not for the the sprint or something like that. All right, so you see, I'm trying to bring out some of these uh, bigger pockets and folds. Uh, I do love the selection tool inside of this app because it is very easy to draw exactly what I'm trying to get that exact shape. I find it a lot more difficult to get the shapes that I'm showing you right here inside of the other softwares. In fact, my second favorite program to color in is Clip Studio, but I can't stand the selection tool. But I still color in it. I uh, just actually just put up another uh, Skillshare class where I was coloring in it. And uh, I, I love the software. It's a Clip Studio is a fantastic, very powerful software, both for the desktop and for the iPad. But the selection tool is a little less than desirable, where this selection tool, I can stop, I can pick back up, I can go from click to click, right back to drawing. I mean, you can really control your selection. You can undo and redo parts of the selection. So yeah, and for comic style shading, and cell shading, cell coloring, uh, it's, it's fantastic. So, yep, that's my opinion. I'm not paid to say that, just giving you my 
in my opinion. All right, let me try to read through some of these real quick. Rob is a wizard. Thanks, Johnny Cage. I wish. I wish I, I had powers. Okay, um... I never thought you used multiple layers for your flats. I thought you would use one flat layer and then have a backup layer. Yeah, there, you know, there's different ways to do it. I, I like to separate them as I color it in. Uh, call me crazy. There's probably better ways to accomplish it, but uh, it's just my process. Um, no, no portfolio reviews tonight. Um, I was trying to plan some stuff, but it fell through. So I'll, I'll try to set something else up real soon and uh, let you guys know. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so uh, selection is easy for me, but it's all based on style. Yeah, for sure. Some people, uh, the way the tools work might match their style, which obviously makes things uh, a lot nicer. Uh, for me, this one seems to match my style pretty well. Yeah, and, and Jordan, this video will go to... Uh, you know the regular videos after the stream is done for sure I make sure to do that with every uh, every one of them so I'll just continue on with this so again kind of drawing in these shapes brushing over with this brush and you know you can be a lot more uh, courageous with this you can get in here and grab like shape after shape after shape and then brush a few in at a time. There's a couple areas in the work where you want to do that because it's almost like you want the effect to, you know, you want to select the area, but then you want it to fade from, you know, one side to the other uniformly in a sense or globally. I don't know how to explain that other than sometimes it makes sense to grab multiple areas. And then also if you brush in an area like this and I got a little bit of a light gap I don't want right there, Sometimes I'll just kind of smudge that shape into place. Even like this edge over here. Sometimes I'll blend the the very edges out a little bit more. And again, the smudge brush can be great for that. A lot of times I just kind of retrace the shadowed areas. So I try to be as descriptive with the uh, line art as I can. And then it will save me having to think too much about it when I go to do this part. Again, I kind of want this to feel, bring that shadow into there a little more. Yeah, I feel like all this would be in shadow. And as, something else I've noticed too with doing these shapes like this is you really can go just extreme with it. Like you can just keep overlapping and overlapping these shapes. I really don't have as much patience for it as I probably should. But I've noticed that if you just keep building up these shapes back and forth from shadows to highlights, you can really sculpt with these basic shapes and make some really neat effects. It's, it's kind of cool. Like you think it would start contradicting the process and it would start to uh, you know be too much you know you can overdo a lot of things in art and for some reason it, you can take it really far um, I, I often will just you know call it done before I get to that level but I've noticed that the more you do it the better it starts to look uh, an artist that comes to mind that does that really well is uh, Patrick Brown fantastic uh, colorization process and he will overlay a lot of highlight and shadow shapes in the, you know, in that cell shading effect. And it, I don't know, it just looks sweet. You know, you can really take it pretty far. But like anything else, the more you do it, the more you learn the little tricks and the things that work in your, your work, you know, work with your style. And then you just keep milking that cow, I guess, you know, like going for what works and doing more and more of it. Sorry, just reading through some of the comments. Who are you drawing? This is Hobgoblin. That is great. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, and just so you guys know, you can get the line art from this um, over on my DeviantArt. And so you're welcome to color along or, you know, do your own thing to it. Uh, some people were talking in the chat here about painterly styles. Uh, you guys are welcome to grab the line art and play with it and paint all over it. I'd love to see it. Um, or just, you know, show me some of your work too. So, you know, we're not doing a, that type of live stream today. But at the same time, you're always welcome to tag me in a post and let me see what you're working on. And I'll try to give feedback when I can. I'll be honest, like a lot of times I have to... Uh, spend a lot of my time reviewing work on my uh, Udemy and Skillshare because I, I get so many submissions now of artwork every day that it's hard for me to like just give these long-winded um, responses to some of your guys' posts. But, you know, some of the work I see is just fantastic and I'll just jump in when I can and say, great job, keep it up, looking good. And I have to at this point because I'm getting a lot of tags and posts and responses and uh, submissions and, and different, you know, so it's, it's tough for me. So ho hopefully for any of you listening that might have seen or experienced that, um, just want to be forthcoming and say, you know, I wish I had more time in the day, but I will try when I can to, you know, give some more meaningful cre uh, feedback. It's important that it's not just, you know, always, um, nice you know like i mean it's i want to be nice of course you know everybody should try to be nice but it's it's a matter of um making sure that it's truly helpful that it's it's uh something that can benefit uh you as an artist not just hey man looking great and I, but there are times if it just looks great and i can't add to it i am just going to say it looks great i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tear it down just for the sake of trying to give some uh tough critique or something you know I'm gonna call it how I see it but um but yeah there are those times I just look at it and I'm like wow I don't know what to offer they're doing so much right you know sometimes it is a matter of like like I'll tell you this one like when people submit multiple multiple sketches right so they they don't just draw one sketch they show me like 20 sketches and a page of like hands or a page of like anatomy or whatever I almost can never be negative about that. Why? Because they sh it shows in the amount of sketches that, now this isn't like a portfolio review su submission. This is just the work they're doing. It's like, I just always want to say positivity on that because that is the right thing to do. That, you know, showing hard work, that you're putting in work like that, uh, you, you are going to get better. And so I, ca I can't really critique that a whole lot because like uh, a lot of times I'm impressed that they're putting in that level of work. I just had a, uh, a few that I saw today on, on Udemy and people were, uh, you know, really working hard and submitting a lot of samples of the different studies. And that's, that's how I do it. Like, I, I don't think I'd be nearly as far if I didn't just do a lot of studies, you know, a lot of practice, a lot of failures, unfortunately, <laughs> but that's the way to get there is like, you know, you fail so many times you're like, ah, okay, I know that's not working. Time to mix it up. Time to change it. All right, and I'm going to get to some highlights here uh, because this is probably it's, it's getting there. And you can see, I can keep thinking about it globally as well, and I can also mess around after I think I've got enough of the shadows in place. I can. Oh, you know what? No, I got to get the side of the hand here. But yeah, let me grab a few shapes at once and try to speed this up doesn't need to take this long and here I feel like you're gonna get some shadowing here but then I feel like it needs to reverse on this side so let me do this let me grab the side of the finger this brush that in and then I'm gonna bring the shadow back this way I'm just kind of smudging some of this around. I feel like the gaps there are a little off, distracting.
All right, so somebody's like, have you ever designed uh, Photoshop brushes? Yes, I have. Uh, it's been a while since I added to that set because I don't work in Photoshop as much. Uh, but it's uh, it's on my Gumroad, and I probably should add some more. Uh, Photoshop is still you know just a very powerful way to create. Uh, I, you know what's funny is that the one thing I still gravitate to Photoshop to for is my uh, thumbnail designs. Any anytime I'm designing something, uh, I still use Photoshop. But I don't really illustrate or draw on it anymore. I should say. Um, and it's probably still probably still second best for painting. It's probably close with a, a close tie with. Uh, Clip Studio for digital painting. Uh, it's just that basically I like the Clip Studio smooth watercolor brush for painting. But other than that, it's um, yeah. There's just certain things like like for instance the brushes. I can make better brushes inside of Clip Studio uh, because the way it utilizes the uh, I think it's the ribbon feature. I, I can't remember not looking at it right now, but it's and, and you can. Uh, you can colorize your brushes in a more effective way in Clip Studio. It's so weird because Clip Studio hasn't updated that I'm aware of in quite some time, and its brushes are still better than than all of them. Like the, even better than Procreate. I love Procreate's brushes. Some of the Luminance brushes are fantastic, but uh, Clip Studio just has some very unique uh, controls for the brushes and. I don't, it's almost weird that the other ones don't, I always find it strange that these other companies don't just like snag what the other one's doing if, if it's that much better. Like I mentioned about the selection tool in this software, oh man, I just wish they would all do it the same. You know, like, like it happens that way in a lot of other aspects of these programs, but uh, yeah, there's certain things they just kind of leave it the way it is. I don't know if there's some proprietary thing they got going on there where they, they've got it protected. I, I doubt that's it, but you never know. Yeah, Christopher Hart's got some good books. I started out, I would say, with Christopher Hart's stuff, or some of it anyways. I mean, I started with How to Draw the Marble Way. It would have been the, the you know, the main uh, book that, that set me off. And then um, I did some Chris Hart books. Uh, some of the other ones are the, I think they're the wizard ones. Um, there's lots of good books out there. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I try to take all of it in if I can, you know, I don't, I don't really think there's any bad knowledge out there. You know, it's like, it, it's going to be just some of it's going to be, uh, transformative for me and other things are going to be, like, eh, you know, not so much for me, but I still enjoyed it. Like, it's just not a, it's like a it's like pizza there's not really a bad pizza there's just different kinds of pizza you know i never met a pizza i didn't like same thing with books and knowledge i, w I would never say like one over the other it's just there's certain ones like burn hogarth's books they were transformative for me and then i've mentioned this recently it's like then the books of um uh bridgman i i wasn't that into his his way of explaining things uh, and then lately, I can't get enough of Bridgman. Bridgman has been a lot more um, easier for me to translate lately. Like it's like a translation. Like at first, I didn't understand what he was trying to convey. It was the same information. I just wasn't ready to receive it, I guess. And then it didn't apply to my work. It didn't seem to work well when I went to uh, to do it. And then um, tried it again more recently and yeah I love this stuff now in fact I've been wanting to do some uh, videos where I I share some of the studies as I work through the book because another part of it is I, I really feel like you do have to translate him you can't you can't draw the stuff exactly the way you see it uh, you only get so much out of it it's more that you have to take it and implement your own style along with the way that he's trying to explain structure and then it makes a lot more sense so yeah, I don't know. That's just, uh, I think that all this stuff is great, but you have to be ready to receive it. You have to be ready to learn what it is you're after um, or what, what's in front of you. Sometimes it's just not going to make sense until you're you're ready to really uh, go down that road, I guess. 
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit more of the other effects here. I can always come back. Like it'll save these colors right in here under the history, so I'm good there. Uh, obviously, you can just sample the color as well. It's not that big of a deal. But what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna put the the layer over top. I'm gonna tap this. That's a clipping mask. And then I'm going to set the blending mode to one of the, the brighter blending modes. I think it's, where to it go? Color dodge. Now, you know what? I'm going to leave it to normal. And then I'll just use it with the, uh, the brush itself. But you can, you can do it with the blending mode as well. Where's normal? Why don't they put normal to the top? Isn't that where you put normal? Okay, so now I could take this with the highlight brush and select this color here. I think I want to go with a little bit more yellow in there. Yellowish gold like this. Yeah, I think that'll work. We'll try it out. So what happens is now that since that clipping mask is on there, it won't go outside of the uh, confinements of that layer, uh, even if i painting way off the layer. I don't know, it's just kind of a neat way to do this. But uh, So what I'll do is first get in some of the rim lighting that I kind of perceive over here. I'm just going to draw that selection right outside of there. Something like that. Is that too yellow? It is, isn't it? Hmm. What do you guys think? Too yellow? Should I use more of a, a muted version or a white? <laughs> make the tongue dirtier, make the thighs slimmer. Uh, yeah, I'm not editing the work at this point, but, but thanks for the feedback. I'm not editing the line work, I should say. <laughs> Pineapple pizza, crime against God. Come on. It's not that bad. It's not that good. It depends on the place. Okay, so let me do this. I don't think I like the yellow. I'm not seeing your guys' feedback. I guess asking for immediate responses is kind of hard, but I'm going to go back to right before I applied the color, back to the selection. And let's get some of the yellow out of there. Try something like this. Yeah, I'm already liking that better. Right? Yeah, it looks more natural. Okay, so... So now what I'll do is just start grabbing some of the shapes and go across here a little bit. Like that. Again, just to speed things up, I'll uh, try to jump in here and grab a few sections at a time. Make the brush real large. Just kind of glance through this area. Yeah, see, and the other neat thing about this, since it is a floating layer, I've got more options. I can I can erase back with another brush, soft or hard brush, but I use an airbrush. And again, it's that floating layer, so I can I can really push these shapes back and forth. And as I mentioned, I think that when you really start to layer these shapes up, it really starts to uh, add a, a lot of depth and dimension to it. Makes it pretty cool. So. So same thing, I could get in here and blend the edge as well. Now it's usually generally a little bit more of a painterly effect, but I'll just soften up like one side of this line, or half of that line. Just little things like that, I think, start to make it look a little bit better. In clipping mask, CP CSP is way simpler. Yeah, I think they're both great, but I don't I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, you just 
put it over the a layer you want it to affect and you tap it and go to clipping mask. It's pretty easy. But you know, CSP, everything, it's a lot more powerful. It is. Uh, you can do larger file sizes, more resolution. Uh, it doesn't constrict your layers nearly as much from what I've noticed. Clip Studio Paint is a bigger brother version. It's like Photoshop, but not as like not as many people know about it. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that it's it's a more powerful software. Uh, what always brings me back to uh, the Procreate app is the fact that it's it functions in a lot of ways in a more simplistic. Uh, you know, some more simplistic uh, interface for one which I like because I want to be focused on the creation, not where all my buttons are and, and you know, where did I put this tool because it's got so many tools. Like I feel like Clip Studio is great when you're doing like a larger um, like book. You know, if you're going to work on your book, then Clip Studio is the way to go. I don't even think Procreate is really that effective. I will still find myself heading over to this software to um, to draw though. And sometimes even ink and then uh, yeah when I compile everything into a page and I want to obviously do anything like word balloons or anything like that or anything really in-depth it's yeah that's when I go to clip studio because I got a lot more layers and groups to work with uh, it is a more powerful software for sure but as they say different strokes for different folks right Any questions? I feel like I, maybe I shouldn't have did a coloring video. I don't see a whole lot of people concerned with coloring. Maybe I should have did a drawing video. Dang it. You know, I was going to flip a coin. Yeah, thanks tonight, Hawk, Hawk Warrior. Appreciate that. Yeah, we got to think of some more, um, I don't know, some more events on the channel here. Uh, also, uh, I just, I want to thank everybody. I just surpassed 20,000, um, followers on Instagram, which is cool. I know that's not YouTube and maybe some of you are on there some of you aren't, but I just want to thank you because I guarantee the only reason I did go over that was because there's enough of you on here that probably follow some of my work over there. So thank you for that support. It's funny because I've only had success on YouTube for like a larger, uh, viewership and then on social medias, I've kind of struggled a little bit. It's whatever. It's not a big deal. I'm, I'm just glad the YouTube channel does well. But there's um, probably second, or it is second, would be the uh, the Instagram. And I think that's mainly just because it's uh, you know it's art first, like the image first, and everything else later. Like you guys might have realized by now, I can't stand typing. Like I, I'll do it. I type as best I can. But it's, I would rather just, just talk. I know it's lazy. That's me. I, I just, t typing is annoying. Sometimes. Most of the time. Alright, so now, let's see. I'm trying to think of some, uh, probably put a tiny little highlight across the seam. A few more little little pieces of highlights over here. Well, I should be playing around with different shapes. It's a bad habit to get in there and do too many of the same style of shape, I would say. Yeah, 
you know, I feel like that area is just a little too strong, so I'll just soft erase it just a smidge. Okay, uh, you know what, let's do this. I think that explains enough on the, um, you know, so you see I've added some shadows, some highlights on his cowl, and I can keep taking that as far as I need to. I can also jump back to the initial layer, and I usually do this at the end, but I just want to show you that sometimes it's beneficial to, you know, play around with the saturation and the brightness as you go. But, like I said, I, I feel like I can do that right at the end and make the most out of that, so I'm going to leave that where it's at for now. And uh, I'm going to put a uh, an effect on the arm and leg, probably. But I want to show you he he no, you know sometimes has this uh, grid like pattern, or I don't know if you call it grid scales. So what I might do there is kind of create that. I'll show you two ways. But well, one way would be to scale the brush down. Not a highlight brush, shadow brush. And then draw these in first like this. And then shadow it. Uh, the reason I wanted to do it this way is because it allows me to leave in my, my previous rendering. So let me go back and show you the other way that I would do it. First I'm going to shadow this area though. So let's do that. Shadow, make this larger. Again, I'm going to think a little bit more globally about the area. Make sure this is locked. It is. So back of the arm, side of the leg. Shadow from his body being hunched over his legs. Underneath the leg here. Over here. And again, so what I mean by globally is that I'm, I'm just getting in the broad strokes of the shadows and then I can tighten up in the work here. And I could scale down the brush and I could start to try to sculpt, you know, the anatomy a little more. Um, I'm going to refrain from doing that as far as with the, you know, the soft brush like this. I just feel like it's a little bit less control. It's got its time and place, but... I'm going to continue doing what I've already been showing you, and that's drawing in the shapes. Like this. Just kind of brush that in. Right, a little more. Yeah, something like that. I'm not seeing any comments. You guys still here? Anybody? Okay, something like that, and then let's work on the leg a little bit. All I'm doing there is I'm, I'm turning the uh, toggling the selection off and then turning it back on. I almost feel like that's a little too much. Let's try that. A little more. OK, 
Okay, and I missed uh, this area down here. Shade that back. Okay. All right, for some reason I am not seeing any new comments and I would assume somebody's saying something, right? So do we lose our comments? No. Last one I'm seeing is from Nighthawk Warrior and that's been sitting there for, for a minute. Uh-oh. Darn you, YouTube. All right, well, I'm just going to continue on. Hopefully, it will uh, resolve itself because I don't know what what to do here. And I don't want to stop the stream over. I mean, it's kind of a significant reason, but. Yeah, I got to research this stuff. I haven't uh, studied it in a while, and it seems like it's, you know, it's always changing. The lovely thing about technology is constantly changing faster than I can keep up and so let me get to the part where again this is just kind of the base shadowing I could be going a lot faster too probably should be just select all this especially because these shapes here aren't you know they're not too detrimental to the the art they don't have to be perfect and perfectly placed to always make sense you just have to have some kind of consistency I suppose but that's about it they don't need to be perfect shapes to the, every muscle or something like that all right so there's the first uh, you know we've had soft shadows the first shape of shadows and then uh, now put in some highlights again I'm going to repeat the process of adding a layer setting it to clipping mask selecting uh, something in the lighter color probably go much lighter like into here and set that to the highlight brush Kind of test it out. Oh, way too small. Kind of test it out. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then probably the same kind of thing where I'll put some shapes into here. Like that. And then I might add in a few areas just a little bit of that. Uh, rim lighting or edge lighting. Is that too much? How much too much? I think that's good. Maybe a little less predominant like that. You can always add to it, right? And then I would say, well, you can't take away, but you can because you can just uh, grab the layer and soft it, soft it, <laughs> soft erase it back. Still no chat. I can't believe this. This is why I need to switch to Twitch or something. I'm like, why did that even happen? I guess you're not safe no matter where you go. Some, there's always going to be some kind of issue. Well, hopefully you guys will still enjoy this live stream. Might as well just been a, a video. Without the chat. Ah, man, I want to try it. You know what? I'm going to try to refresh this uh, studio. Hopefully this doesn't kick us out. If this does kick us out, forgive me. Um, but I feel kind of silly having a live stream where I can't see your guys' chat. So I'm going to refresh this. Hold on. And hopefully this is not the end. If it is, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay, uh, let's do another test. Test, test, one, two. Oh, I see some new ones. All right, cool. I should have did that a while ago. Sorry, you guys. Thanks for hanging out as I experience technical difficulties. Yikes. 
Thanks, Kanan. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'm having fun with this one. You know, somebody asked me earlier in a post, and I don't know if they're watching or not, but I'm just going to mention it. Uh, what's up, Lance? Thanks for st sticking around. Uh, they asked, like, they, they said something like, your past two, a um, uh, couple of illustrations have looked a little bit better. Have you felt yourself, like, leveling up, right? And I'm like, how do I answer that? Because we all have these, like, moments where we feel like we're doing our better work, and then we have those moments where we feel like we're not drawing as well. Uh, the main thing is that you just persist through any of those highs and lows, obviously. But uh, I, I, I did actually kind of feel like I was doing something different. Not that I was really leveling up. I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't think it's that easy of an answer. But, um, but what it is is that basically I've been rough sketching the concept more and then uh, not settling on bad ideas in the rough sketch, for one, and then going right to ink from the rough sketch. And I think that forces you to hold on to a little bit more of that energy from the artwork and not tense up too much. I feel like I tense up too soon on the artwork if I re-render my pencils. So it was funny they pointed out this one and the, the Violator one because those were two where I specifically did that. Uh, let me see, I can go to gallery here and show you a little bit of what I mean. So this is one I just did. And it was the same thing where I started inking it from a pretty loose sketch. In fact, I shared the different versions of the rough sketch of the inks. And again, it forces you to think a little bit more on your feet. And then I think that you lose, uh, you, you don't tense up too much. Where, let me pick a different one here. Like, uh, like this one. I rendered this a little bit more of Chaplin Spawn. And you can tell it's more stiff. It has more of a... Almost like it looks like vector art. Almost it's too stiff and static. So at any rate, just keep that in mind. That's that's kind of what I felt I was seeing uh, go on in my own work there. Of uh, you know drawing something more like this, and then almost just going to inks with it. This is supposed to. I was thinking of that. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched that movie. Um. Um. Goodness, what's that movie? They're, they're like in a game. It's 3D, really good. Uh, Gantz, Gantz O? But anyways, the, one of the villains from Gantz O, it was like kind of a part of the movie I was remembering or trying to remember. Yeah, see, Cannon says the same thing. goes from, yeah, and I've seen you do it, man. I've seen it, you do it where you, you have a really light idea, and then bam, you just ink it, and it looks sweet. So great job on that. And, and I, I do, I feel like that is something that in... And digital kind of makes a lot more sense anyways because, oh, this was one I was going to mention. Like, yeah, I did this one of Batman. And I think it came out okay, but, what, you know, it's a lot more tense looking and feeling. So this was the initial, this was a traditional art one. And it's all right. You know, it's a, I, I think it's one of my better Batman shots. I mean, it's plain, obviously. But, um, but yeah, it's there was a lot more time and deliberation that went into this. And I think it shows in the end result where when you do something like this, it's much faster. Um, I'm not the fastest artist. I, you guys probably know that from watching the channel. I uh, I penciled and inked this one in just under eight hours, which is actually kind of quick for me, and that's probably not quick enough, right? I mean, if, if I'm gonna do a book and a monthly title or ever, you know, again, I gotta, I gotta get faster. So yeah, jumping from pencils to ink sooner helps with that process, and it helps you retain some of that energy. So again, I just want to make sure to answer that because uh, it was a question earlier in one of the posts I saw. So yeah, and uh, so let me do this. I'm going to show you how I would put that pattern in on his suit because I think that might be more interesting for people to see. Okay, so with the design on a suit, there's a couple ways I could do it. One way is, or not design, it's a texture for the scales or whatever. Uh, I could draw these right in. So let me grab one of my ink brushes here and set this to black. Oh, not too big.
Actually, I'm going to grab the other one. It's easier to control the edge of it. So yeah, so I could do one of these. And generally, you're going to want to line this pattern up straight to the screen first. I'd probably use a grid. Probably make it a little easier. Where's my grid? Oh, drawing guide. And take off the perspective. There's the perspective grid I use for the buildings, by the way. You know what? I actually want to leave that alone. I'll just eyeball it. So copy and paste. Actually, was this line up the way it needs to? Yeah, it should. Yeah, this always seems like it's going to take forever, but then it speeds right up. funny I, I used to have to do this all the time for uh, vehicle wraps the same kind of effect you know what I feel like those don't look like the scales though do they they need to overlap a little bit more yeah they need to go more like this don't they uh, I'm just gonna show you it this way and then I'll probably redo it I really just want to show you the technique so you'd get the pattern working the way that you want obviously And then save it. Save whatever patterns you do. Be cool. Share it with your fellow artists. Send me a copy. It's like why do we why do we not all just have like one big Google Drive that we store bits and pieces of our art so that we can all share it? That's a good idea. Why why, why aren't we doing that? Anyone? But yeah, so you get this the way you want size wise as many as you need like I said I think I might redo it I don't think it looks bad it looks better from a distance doesn't it yeah but anyways it saves a bunch of time once you got it all going and you you just distort it so you keep duplicating it you get as many as you need in the place that you need and then you just warp this uh, was it liquify I'll take this scale up a soft brush and I'll just maneuver it to where it looks like it's curving around you know the deltoid and And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll cut this out in between. Let me just show you. I'll try to get it to look like it's bending around the deltoid. So you usually have to push the sides in a little more and then pull the middle out and stretch it back here. Something like that. And then I'll cut other parts of it, usually. Cut and paste. And then just rotate it or distort it. It looks better than if you just leave it all flat against uh, the anatomy. You know, you want to get you want to give it that effect that it's wrapping around the muscles. And then, and you know, I'll just say that's done right there, right? So then after you got it in place. You can also just, uh, you can use blending modes, you can paint this, uh, you can paint in between it, almost like you're using it more as a, uh, a uh, reference, you know, but you can just kind of soft erase it back. You know, whatever ends up looking more natural. And then what I'll usually do is I'll do something like that, and I might come back and grab one of the highlight colors like this. And then I'll just bring out some of these little scales. But the reason I like doing it like this is because I can shade it the way that I want. You know, shade the anatomy the way that I want. And then I can just drop in this effect pretty quickly afterwards. 
because I would end up coloring the line work anyways. I don't think I would want this part of his suit design to be so opaque, you know? So that's, anyways, that's my process for a pattern like that. Uh, and you can do the same effect with everything. You can do, uh, you really should. Like, like I'll take and put like little imperfections in the buildings back here. They'll be very faint because it's way back in the distance. You're not really gonna see like cracks and imperfections as well as you might up close. But you can do that all over and you can add texture after texture. Like I might add some blotchy imperfections in his cowl and his, his uh, cape so it doesn't look so clean. You know, he looks like he hasn't bathed in a while. So, you, you know, you probably want to reflect that in his clothing as well. Uh, Edgar says, I just purchased an iPad Pro coming next Saturday. Any tips for Procreate? Um... You know, did you get a screen protector? Because that seems to be a big one uh, that a lot of people are like, oh, I'm slipping and sliding all over the screen. I just got this thing. You got to play with the pressure curve quite a bit. Um, let's see what I can't. I'm always switching mine around. But uh, pressure curve. Yeah, look at that funky pressure curve I got going on. But that and always clean the screen. Your oils from your hands are going to get on there. Sometimes it's going to feel slick, uh, slick and slippery from it. Clean that screen all the time. I keep a microfiber and some cleaner, and I, I'm constantly um, trying the next best thing for screen protectors, but I always have an extra one of the one I like because the, the Tech Armor Anti-Glare seems to be okay for me, but it's still missing something. I still want that next best screen protector, but I tried paper like, didn't like it. Imagine that. But uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of finding what works for you. And then I'll tell you a big tip for this stuff is get it working and leave it alone. Don't touch it. If it's working, ever hear that thing? If it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, because I'll tell you what, settings can be a nightmare, especially if you're not keeping track of what you're doing. Then all of a sudden you, you change something in the middle of a job or you know, it, it's just, it can be a mess, leave it alone. Uh, or another thing is you get your your phone with you almost all the time. Take a picture of your settings as you're making changes. Uh, so then you got you can backtrack. So yeah, nothing worse than that. It's one of the things we take for granted with digital art because with traditional, you know, you're not changing the stuff, right? You might change a lead or something or a different, you know, try a different brush. But it's not like oh, you know, you can't find that that pencil or brush. You go out and buy a new one. Uh, but with digital, you change something, it can really uh, really mess you up. Okay, so I've explained some of the cowl and cape, and that's really the method I would continue to do. I'd probably add another layering effect to that. Uh, I guess I can work on the face here, because it looks... Somebody mentioned, too, like with the uh, the artwork, they're like, well, it just he doesn't look goblin enough. He looks too human-like, you know, and I see that now. I, I probably should have given him the very distorted nose. Now, that's something I really could... I'm just going to mess around here, see if I can fix it. So this is why we we go for digital art, right? Because we can we can fix things. Look how bad my coloring is when you take the line work off. Looks like a kid got a hold of a box of crayons. Okay, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to try to grab just the nose. So actually I'm going to ignore the shadow a little bit more. And let's say... How can I do that? Actually, I'm going to cut it, three finger swipe, cut, paste, give him a bit of a nose job here, and then uh, liquefy. Nope, oh, brush is way too large. Yeah, Spider Man. You got to make the sound effects. I swear, as I was drawing this, all I could hear was Mark Hamill's voice. Anybody else hear that while they're looking at this picture? Or am I just losing my marbles? But yeah, like, uh, wasn't he? He was the voice for uh, uh, the animated series, right? Anybody? Am I the only one remembering that? Anyways, he, he does such a great uh, evil cartoon voice. Is that nose better or worse? What do you guys think? But that is one of the benefits of this stuff. You can just select and isolate an area. I mean, obviously, I probably got to fix a little more than that, but um, just easy to make those kind of adjustments. I'll be honest, I think I like it more. 
think the other nose was a little too plain. He was the Joker. Yeah, duh. Goodness. Oh, look at that. Joker, Joker, Joker. Everybody knew that one, right? Um, better. All right, cool. I'll leave it. But yeah, his, his, him being the voice for uh, Hobgoblin was pretty cool, too. All right, so let's work on the face a little bit. Select this. Grab a shadow color. Mark Hamill, the man, Luke Skywalker. Probably the first, God, probably the first person I can think of as a kid, like, wanting to be, you know, as, in, in, a, uh, in a science fiction fantasy, you know, type setting. Uh, would, the oldest I can remember would be, yeah, Luke Skywalker. Um, or Michael Knight, right? Anybody remember Kit, Knight Rider? Everybody, right? That was probably the first one I can remember, but I don't, I don't feel like that was as much science fiction. Talking car? I mean, you know, we got that now. That's totally doable. That was such a cool series. All right, so we'll get the cheekbone. Oh, you know what? I skipped a step, didn't I? So the first thing I would generally do is shade the side and bottom of the face. Kind of shade up like this. Yeah, that's better. And probably from the top a little bit too, just because he's got that cowl. And that hood coming down. It's funny too, as soon as I do that, I see all the missing parts of the color. Uh, something you should probably do is always do your selection first, and then you won't get these little hiccups in the color. The reason I have them is because old habits die hard. I like to draw in all my color. I don't know why. It's not as proficient. I know that, and I still do it anyways. I'm crazy. And I enjoy the pain punishment of doing things that take longer it's because I'm an artist so I like to draw <laughs> so I draw everything even things that take longer I draw them no no that's not true because I just cheated on the uh, pattern to a shoulder okay so swipe that back over two finger swipe to lock the pixels and back to Doing this, so I'll grab the side of the nose here. Something like that. Uh, and you you know, you can keep going over certain areas, right? You don't have to get it all in one hit. You can layer up these shapes. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes it looks better because of that. And then like side of the nose here, I'll probably even grab like this. Gotta leave a little bit of light on the nostril. Let's try that. Yeah, why not? We don't have a flying car yet. Uh, actually, we do. They just did. You didn't see. Like, I think Japan was testing it out. Google it. Uh, there's a, there's one where they took a car. And it's just a big version of the drones that everybody can buy, right? You can go to Amazon right now, buy yourself a drone, right? It's just a big version of that. And it the, the flight test was awesome. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, as soon as I saw that, I thought, that's it. Those are the flying cars we need. Those drones are so well designed in a sense for the way that they distribute the weight and everything. I promise you this, it's probably going to all be cars that resemble drones. Now the bad thing is they didn't have the covers around the uh, propellers, impellers, I don't like what you call them. So I could see a lot of decapitations going on, so that's not good. They gotta fix that. But all they do is they put that shroud around it and you got a bunch of hovering cars. So yeah, flying cars are right around the corner, I believe. We should have had them years ago, hoverboards, all that good stuff, but it's coming folks, it's coming.
why is why are decapitations not good? I guess it depends on your perspective, you know, where you're at, who who's getting the the decapitation. If he deserves it, then so be it. I mean, who am I to judge? No, it was just funny they were doing that test and the flight looked awesome, but you know, I was just looking at those those things going, wait a second. Wait a second, we get, we got some issues here. We have to do something about those. Yeah, Gantz, oh, fantastic. If you haven't watched that, uh, now if you're younger, you ask your mommy and daddy. I don't know about that because it's 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 a bit extreme in some instances, but man, it is freaking straight eye candy. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I watched that. And like immediately was like, you know, you watch something, it just gets you really pumped for drawing, like watching the Avengers movies when they came out. I just, I just had to draw, like I almost had a hard time watching them without drawing because there's that much, um, I don't know, creativity and, and eye candy throughout that, that it just gets you pumped, right? Like, especially it's a comic book movie, but, but Gantz always the same kind of thing. It's so intense looking and so breathtaking to behold, uh, yeah, I wish they'd do more movies to that level. Like, I thought, um, oh, what was that one? Was, up until then, it was probably one of the better 3D movies, I thought. Um, and you guys share in the comments, too. Like, what what is your favorite, you know, realistic 3D? Or I, I don't know if you call that realistic, but just, you know, awesome 3D movie. Um, up until then, I thought... Um, Beowulf was pretty good. You know, and it's, it still is pretty good. I watched it not too long ago. It's okay. You know, it's as far as... Um, I just like the story uh, and everything. But at the time, it was groundbreaking, right? It was like it was like just amazing that they had pulled that off. Uh, but since then, they've done, you know, a bunch that are that are pretty freaking awesome. And, and Gantz O, I would say, is to me now is the number one spot. But you guys probably know of some better ones. And I'm just seeing if you guys commented back and said anyone that uh that was better for CGI. I saw Nightwing in there and I'm like, wait a second, there's a Nightwing CGI move? But you guys were talking back and forth, obviously. Megamind? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, Megamind's awesome. I and I don't mean animated. Animated, there's that's a whole nother ball game. There's a whole nother, you know, um set of rules on that, or just, you know, a bunch of other great movies for that. Um, I'm just talking like, like that Gantz O style, that Beowulf style where, where it's like, basically you can, you can recognize actors in it. Um, and you know that, yeah, it's right around the corner and, and they're going to be, you know, just they're They've already talked about it where they're just going to buy the rights from actors and actresses, some of which are older and can't do certain, you know, effects and, and, uh, scenes and stuff like that anymore. Some of which are probably gone and they're going to bring them back. And uh, so they'll, they'll buy rights to the actors and they'll just put them in the movie and the actor will be sitting on a beach somewhere just, you know, waiting for the movie to come out. Like, it's, uh, they've talked about it. I don't know how, you know, legit that is, but it does kind of make sense that they'd be able to do that at some point. I mean, they've gotten pretty close. They've done some pretty cool things like um, Schwarzenegger and the Terminators, you know, like, um, what was the one where, uh, I think the one it was the one with Christian Bale, right, where... They had brought him back in his glory heyday kind of look, you know, and that was all 3D, and it looked pretty darn impressive. It wasn't very long in the, the movie, but it was uh, it was highly effective. Yeah, Ready Player One is pretty good, definitely. Yep, I enjoyed that as well. Um, you know, it's weird though. You know, until you said that, it's almost like it's not as memorable for me wonder why that is but yeah that was pretty good but yeah I felt like it it faded um, from the, the memory banks quite quickly I'll need to watch it again and see if it uh, holds up to the test of time not like it's not hasn't been that long but uh, I could generally gauge a movie a lot better the second time you know like Avatar obviously was was groundbreaking and amazing 
and uh, I, I'll still watch Avatar. But the bad thing is, is kind of let down by the fact they were like, oh, there'll be a part two, and all this stuff will happen on one of the moons of Avatar or something, and then all of a sudden nothing happened. It's just like, yeah, so much for that concept, or supposedly they're still making it, but there's been so much time in between now, I don't even know that it'll do that well. All right, let's add some highlights. I think I should shade some of the side of the mouth here. Try that. Favorite CGI movie, Predators. Is there a Predator version that's all CGI? Are you just... So I guess now you're talking about parts of it, right? Characters that, you know, the, the creatures in there being CGI, not the entire movie being CGI, right? I guess I was kind of assuming we were talking about full 3D CGI. Okay, what did I do here? I had this set to clipping mask, and I used a highlight brush. Okay, so Jordan says they are still working on the Avatar movies. All right. We'll see. John Wayne Coors Light beer commercial. They're going to bring John Wayne back? Or they did. Is that what you're saying? There's already a Coors Light beer commercial? More of a Bud Light fan. That's probably why I didn't see it. Oh, uh, Nicholas, thanks for saying that. You finished a course on Skillshare. Appreciate it. Yeah, Canon's right. I mean, there's definitely places where, uh, you know, really well done anim uh, animatronics was fantastic and, and powerful for the uh, the movies. Yeah, the thing is a good example for sure. Well, I think that too, like, you know, we're seeing a lot of it where people are making like some great CGI uh, applications and uses of it, and then there's there's a lot of low budget stuff. You know, there's just people that um movies where yeah they probably should have went with some of the old school techniques and i think anything horror related um the old school special effects kind of take it but but then again i'm also older now and i don't get scared at movies like i used to and i miss that i miss being that you know kid or whatever and literally being scared and now looking back at some of the stuff that we were maybe scared of in the movies and, and the way it was made. It's it's kind of funny, but yeah, I miss that part. I just want one more movie to come out that literally scares me. It would be fantastic, but... It could happen. I was kind of hoping that... Um, uh, the one with the clown. It? Yeah, no, those were good. They weren't they weren't as good as I hoped. They were kind of a little animated, a little yeah. And I'm scared of clowns. You know, there I said it. Okay, not as tough as I thought. I'm scared of clowns. But uh, yeah, there was a few parts that were definitely kind of creepy, and then there, then it was just kind of like eh, yeah, it's not that frightening. I could take them. Yeah, I didn't really get into par paranormal activity just because it uh, all that camera move movement was throwing me off. Like I just didn't. It's not like I got sick or nothing, but it just it was distracting me so much that I didn't I couldn't get into it as much. Um, 
I, I felt like they did a better job at, uh, oh, what's the one where the monster's chasing them through the city? Or, well, it's a big monster, and uh, there's a bunch of smaller ones that are coming off that monster. What was that? Um, man, I'm horrible at remembering these, these names. Just wait for you guys to throw it out there. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that's that's nightmarish right there. I like how they uh, they brought that concept back into um, uh, Cabin in the Woods. That one creature was kind of like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, Cloverfield. Anyways, yeah, I know everybody's like Cloverfield, Clover. Tr tremors? <laughs> yeah, tr no, Tremors is awesome in a whole nother way. Just because it was... they uh, Part one, anyways. You know, they, they quickly got pretty cheesy from there but that was a great combination of a really neat new concept in a lot of ways I thought and just you know that one had pretty decent acting Kevin Bacon was hilarious in it and yeah anyways that that was that's one of the, my all-time favorites but not because it was really scary I mean I guess in a way like something coming up out of the ground grabbing your your toes that's kind of freaky but um or no, like Children Under the Stairs. Like, the title just scared me. You know, I don't even know how much the movie actually scared me, but the concept that there was children under the stairs, because I never really liked stairs, and like with the openings of basement stairs, you know, I always felt like there was something in there going to grab my ankles. And so after seeing the title of that movie, yeah, that kind of hit, hit the nail on the head, and I run upstairs, even now, to this day, scared of stairs. All right, TMI. Sharing a little too much today, folks. I don't know if I like the way that face is shaded. Let's bring out the eyes. Yeah, I, honestly, as far as you guys are talking about the Cloverfield uh, movies and paradox all that I like the so far I like all of them um, I think they're doing pretty good with those but yeah I saw a lot of negative feedback on it oh yeah Canaan threw out exorcism no nah, I, see I won't watch any of those no exorcism for me no no spinning heads no demonic possession I stay away from that stuff yeah poltergeist is definitely one that uh that got me as a kid for sure Not to mention, man, like years later, all the things that kind of happened. I mean, I don't know how true all this stuff was, but, you know, the little girl passing and all that. And they had a bunch of problems on set as they were filming, supposedly. It really sounded like that was, yeah, kind of dark and, and something going on there. I don't know. Kind of spooky. Okay, so now how to color the eyes, make them look glossy. See, this part, I always feel like I want to brighten it up, make them look glossy, but I don't want these to look like pupils. So I have to, like, try to shade off to the side, maybe. I don't know if that's going to work. Does that look all right? I think no matter what, it's kind of going to look like pupils. Even though I don't want it to. Do you read the current Flash, Ron? Howard Porter's are as incredible, incredible, and all the speedsters from the past showed up in issue seven sixty one. No, but I'd like to because I uh, I just watched the series. I didn't finish the whole series, but I watched a lot of it finally. I I just hadn't watched it. I you know was just busy. I don't get into TV shows a lot, but I I finally watched it, and man, I really enjoyed it, uh, especially more to the beginning. You know, as it went on, it got a little silly, and and that's why I think I trailed off. But man, the first couple seasons were amazing, and it made me really remember the old Flash, uh, obviously, and he was in it, uh, which was cool. And I want to say, uh, Kanan, you pointed it out because I was like, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that it was the uh, 
the dad, you know, the, the original Flash was his dad. But anyways, um, great show, but it made me kind of, you know, want to revisit the character. I guess I didn't pay him no mind uh, in the comics. You know, I didn't grow up as much of a DC guy, uh, more, more into Marvel. And then Jordan, what do you think about Miles Spider-Man before he became popular? Uh, to me, I found out about him in Google Images years ago and read his comics back then. Yeah, see, I I just I started to pay attention to him more after the the animated movie, which was amazing. Obviously, it's fantastic, and so now I'm starting to you know try to pick up some books here and there. I'm on Comicsology, and I, I try to consume most of my comics like that. Well, I shouldn't. I should be buying books, but uh, I got to get back on buying books. But but yeah, I I I think the uh, I think all the revisions of Spider-Man and the different variations are, are cool. Like I. Yeah, I'll be honest. To me, at first, it was always you know Peter Parker is the real Spider-Man kind of thing because that's what I grew up with as a kid. But after they started to really showcase all these different versions and the uh, I don't know if it's multiverse, but they got future versions. All it's just cool. And then after playing the new game, uh, that tied in really well. I thought that was cool and it led up. It seems like it's going to lead up into him having his own game, which would be awesome. And the uh, all the different suit designs alone are just killer you know it's just neat how because you do all these different versions you come up with all these neat ideas uh, i'd be boring to just have it as just the original but the original will always have a place in my heart because as a kid that's who i grew up with it's like uh any of the shows that we we're just talking about the ones when you're a kid just kind of you know they resonate with you all right so let's see here i think i might Color on the pumpkin there a little bit. What time we got here? Hour 20? Yeah, I'll, I'll work on this. This is really the same thing. I'm just doing bits and pieces because this would take me uh, hours to color. But um, unless you guys got any questions, you want to see me color anything? or? or... Yeah, thanks, Kaz. Kaz, hopefully I'm saying that right. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Cannon. Yeah, I'm glad the the uh, eyes look good. Yeah, see, you guys are saying some of the different names. Like, I haven't read any of the Superior Spider-Man. I just recently found out that's supposed to be Doc Ock, right? You know, and then, like... Uh, then you just mentioned, one of you guys mentioned the uh, Scarlet Spider. There's so many, like, I, I haven't even read any of that. Like, I'm so far behind on reading comics. I'll tell you what I just picked up yesterday, though. Um, it's off to a decent start. I know it'll be great because it's Peter David and Dale Keon, uh, or Keon, I never know how to say that, but uh, they're doing another a Hulk version. It's uh, Maestro, or Maestro's, uh, is it Maestro? Maestro's um, origin story. And I'll tell you, the art looks fantastic. You get a lot of you guys prior to picked it up. Like, yeah, dude, you're you're late to the party. But, um, anyways, I can't wait to finish that series. And uh, yeah, that that looks like a amazing book. Storyline will probably be awesome. I, you know, again, being a kid and reading like Hulk when it was those two working together, some of my favorite books of all time. You know, like I just liked. Uh, you know, the green gray Hulk thing they did, you know, it was, it was awesome. But yeah. And he, and in my opinion, that's the, that's the only guy to draw Hulk. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's people that draw Hulk very, very well. Uh, I like Joe Mad's version, but Dale Keehan and the way that he draws the Hulk is just, yeah, no comparison to me. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Like, they had never done an origin story on him. Like, he just kind of came out of nowhere. They talked about it, but they didn't They didn't do the story. So now that's come, that's out, or book one's out. And, uh, yeah, it's off to a good start. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a fantastic book one, but it, it's pretty cool. Art's beautiful. Yeah, 
Yeah, thanks, DJ May. I appreciate you picking up that course. I'm going to be adding more to that. I've actually been studying, uh, you know, like I want to add some more uh, lessons on drawing the planes of the head because I think that's very important when, uh, you know, if you have a hard time with structure. And uh, so I'm going to add more lessons on the planes of the head and uh, just, just more. I think I'm going to start jumping into those courses and just adding more angles and and draw alongs with with all those different areas like all the different parts of you know the body the anatomy like i just finished up my uh my torso anatomy one so that'll be on skillshare in a few days and i'll be uploading uh something to udemy for that so i go through uh you know all the body and you know and draw the muscles and really in a stylized way i just call it you know kind of like burn hogar stuff not comparing my stuff to his by any means but what i'm saying is like i go for more of a dynamic approach not hey i'm going to show you anatomy exactly the way it is because i don't think i'm qualified for that but i talk about the terminology and i break it down in a way that i use it to draw like this you know it's not correct anatomy i mean there's some i i know some of the anatomy or else i couldn't draw it even to this level but uh you know there's people that know it much better than myself right you know i'm not trying to uh say it's it's the end all for an anatomy course, but hopefully it will still help people to, you know, bridge the gap a little bit more and, and level up their game on that. Um, but I always tell people that's one of those things where I don't think you ever stop studying anatomy. You know, like you just always continue to have to revisit them. And in my thought process from me doing it for years, I'll forget stuff. You know, I got to go back and restudy it and revisit it and constantly learning. Oh, Alan Davis, yeah. Yeah, no, another another great one for sure. Wow, your only uh Taroya Taroya? I don't know if I'm saying that right, Taroya. My only interest from Marvel was X Men. That's it, huh? Out of all of all the titles, all the books, that's all you got into was X Men. That's crazy. Yeah, when I for me it was like all Marvel and some DC, like who doesn't love Batman? The villains from Batman are just some of the best villains. And, you know, but it was for, as far as like reading the entirety of the universe, I'm a lot more into it now. But when I was younger, it just something about it didn't appeal to me as much. So strange. It's probably just like, you know, you get used to a certain thing. So I picked up my first really uh, my first real character that I that I uh, just, in, you know, I read all the stuff and picked up every book I could was Silver Surfer. And I don't know why, because looking back, it's such, such a weird character to kind of pick up first. But and then I went from Silver Surfer to Spider Man, and I was all about Spider Man, especially Todd McFarlane was drawing him, all that good stuff. And then it was like just all that '90s art. I was just grabbing whatever was pretty to look at. You know, I think I think it was you know more, I know it was more about the art than the uh, the stories at that point. But the art was just so dang beautiful that that's all I did is just whatever book was uh, the next coolest thing. I feel like I need to shadow this a little more. But I know what it was too, is I was, I was using those, they weren't comics to me, they were art books. You know what I'm saying? Like I was using those to get better at drawing uh, more than looking for the next amazing uh, story. But, uh, you know, now I, I I do both, I guess. But now I do a lot more uh, reading. Especially I've been, as I've already mentioned, I've been on comiXology a lot more. I totally feel guilty about that because it's like, you know, I, I want that tangible book. and um, But, hey, I guess if it still supports the comic industry, then it you know, keeps things going, then I'm going to do that. But, uh, but I do want to get back to actually collecting. Especially, I got a son, and I want to leave him a nice collection of books, not, you know, access to comicsology. <laughs> kind of a weird one to leave in the well. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I just realized I don't know how to shade a pumpkin. So that's great. Yeah, who doesn't love Superman? And for, for, for that, for me, it was like more the movie. You know, like Superman is definitely one of my all-time favorites as well. But it was the movie, for, like, uh, yeah, the movies for me were were just where it was. Almost like I didn't bother reading the comics because I was like, eh, the real Superman is Christopher Reeve. You know, <laughs> like that's just, just kind of how I saw it. Yeah, Ghost Rider's pretty sweet, too. I know, I've, I've been wanting to do a Ghost Rider. Maybe I should do that next. But yeah, this is really the process. I just kind of keep re, uh, you know, redoing these steps. It's like the flames right here on the, the pumpkin. Probably pick a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I need to shadow it a little bit first on the outsides. Oh, you know what I can do here is I can use the uh, the luminous brushes, which are just awesome in this software. App, sorry, app, not software. Same thing, right? So yeah, get the shadow going like this, and, and I guess you could really brush this in a little bit more heavily. Uh, try to get these rounded forms in here a little bit yeah I'd probably do that a couple times something like that but yeah, but then find the, or the luminance, light pen, and then go with something a little brighter. Bzz. That's a little much, but you can probably put this in and then blend it. Hold on, let's see here. I guess I could try to push back the opacity. I don't know if it'll work for this. I'm I'm gonna try. Here are the eyes. I can try to put it in there and then smudge it. It's a little smudgy. Looks like it's too much, doesn't it? Don't you want? Don't you wish sometimes you could just pass the art over to somebody else? Like one of you guys. Hey, one of you guys, take this file and and fix it for me. Nobody? Any takers? Do my homework. Mow my lawn? What? No, I didn't say that. Just kidding about the lawn part. Not the homework though. Yeah, I don't know. That's maybe there's too much orange, right? Or should this be colored like smoke? I'm gonna have to pull some reference. Oh, thanks, Alf. Appreciate that. You like the yellow highlighted pumpkins? All right. You know, and another big part of this too is like you got you got to almost get all of it working. Uh, so I, I will actually bounce around usually and do a little bit of everything, a little bit of the background, come back to the character, because it all, it's all got to work together. Yeah, it is fire, so I mean, yeah, it's true, it's fire, so it would be, it would look like that, maybe a little bit more red than in that case, right? Maybe going too much with the, the orange. But, um, but yeah, getting the background, everything working together, because, you know, the light, uh, bounces around, right? You get, um more of a cohesive illustration yeah cohesive all right 
it's been an hour 35 I think I'm gonna jump out of here people and I'm really running out of stuff to show you but uh, hopefully this was informative I think I'll, in the thumbnail I'll just show this part I like the way the shoulder came out but um but yeah I need some recommendations for new videos though anybody give me some ideas here oh and as I say that Josh says do another traditional inking tutorial Okay, yeah, I've been meaning to do that. Like, and, and like I mentioned earlier in the, the stream, um, you know, just, just practice inking from a rough sketch. Uh, Kanan mentioned he does it, does some amazing work. Uh, I, you know, I've been doing it more. Uh, picked up on David Finch doing it. Uh, I didn't realize that he had jumped to the illustration process, or I don't know, I guess it's all the illustration process, but the, the finality is uh, so well, so seamless. And it does, it saves a lot of time. It seems to give you a more fluid vibe to the work. Uh, so maybe I'll talk about that when I do the traditional uh, inking video and um, you know, kind of pick that apart a little bit. But it, it takes some practice. you know. So what I generally do is I'll sketch on the back of my, uh, my art boards and I'll do a real loose sketch and I'll just start inking it. And um, you start to realize what lines you do need to put down. Basically structure. You, know, you put that structure down and then you let your imagination kick in. Go well. I know how I shade eye. I do a, a lot of the same. I, I do a lot of the same steps. You know, so I just retrace those steps, and uh, yeah, you get better and better at it. But I think it shows in the end result of the work. So that's always good. More flare-ups on the pumpkins. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be doing a portfolio review. Um, if nothing else, I might just do it on the channel here just to, you know, cause I know I promised you guys one and I mentioned it. So, um, I'll make sure to get something on the schedule, um, real soon. So sorry about that. I just, I got a lot going on over here. A couple, you know, a few irons in the fire. I was trying to get some of that anatomy course done. Uh, and you know, you know me, I like sitting here doodling fan art, so I got to make time for that. But, uh, yeah, sorry, Alf, and I, I realize you just got here, so <laughs> about that. All right, well, thanks very much for everybody for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Um, more live streams, more content's on the way very soon, and um, as always, thanks for tuning in.